Hi, it finally happened. GPT-5 is here. And yes, it actually looks quite insane. In this video, I want to provide you the key facts from the announcement, like the promises, benchmarks, and also some demos. So let's start with Sam Altman. He stated that GPT-3 was a high school student, GPT-4 was a college student, and now GPT-5 is a PhD level expert. But to be honest, I also heard that about other models before, so let's take that with a grain of salt. So let's start with a few differences. So before GPT-5, we had two different models, one-shot models like GPT-4.0 and reasoning models like O3. And you had to choose between the two. Now with GPT-5, you get a reasoning model on demand. So for simple questions, it will behave like GPT-4.0. It will answer very quickly, but if you ask for a more complicated task, then it will take its time to answer. But before I'm gonna show you the demos of the OpenAI team, we start with the benchmarks. We start with the SVE Bench Verified Benchmark, which addresses how well models can solve real-world software engineering issues. On the left, you can see a stacked bar for GPT-5, which ranges from 52.8% to 74.9%. But to be honest, something is a little bit off here, because if you have a look at the numbers, then you can see that O3 has got 69%, which should be a higher bar than GPT-5 without thinking. And I don't know if that's an error or if that's intentional, but it looks weird. The actual difference between thinking GPT-5 and O3 is only 5%. So there is only a marginal difference in actual software engineering tasks. And I can't wait to test it out in practice. The next one is the IDA Polyglot benchmark, which is about multi-language code editing. And you can clearly see without thinking the difference between GPT-5 and 4.0 is almost not there. When you add thinking, then the difference between GPT-5 with thinking and O3 is around 8%. That is quite a significant improvement because the numbers are already quite high and it's much harder to get from 80 to 85% compared to from 20 to 25%. The next two benchmarks focus on college level visual problem solving and competition level math. So while the differences between the models may appear marginal at first glance, it's important to note that the performance was already at a very high level across the board. What we can clearly see is that GPT-5 is not a genius without thinking, but the difference between 4.0 and GPT-5 without thinking is quite large with around 70% accuracy, which gives us an indication that the difference in performance between the foundation models is actually quite large. But we can also still see that thinking is required to get on top of the game. The next benchmark on reliability and accuracy is what impresses me the most. So I'm still regularly frustrated by models like GPT-4.0 or even O3 making things up, apologizing and then confidently generating new, equally wrong answers. This might finally be the light at the end of the tunnel. So the hallucination rate has dropped from 13% to just 1.6%. I can't wait to see that in real world use cases more than anything else. Let's now take a look at the demo provided by the OpenAI team showcasing the intuitive switch between a one shot and a thinking model. So the first question was, give me a quick refresher on the Bernoulli effect and why airplanes are in the shape that they are. And that was quite easy for the model and it did not use thinking tokens to answer that question. So the behavior was like a one shot model. It directly answered the question and was pretty fast. The follow-up question was explain this in detail and create a moving SVG in Canvas to show me. As you can see on the left, here we've got thinking mode on. It thought for 28 seconds and then it generated the code in Canvas. It generated like 400 lines of code, which took around two minutes, which is significantly slower than for example, Gemini 2.5 or 3. And here you can see the results. So unfortunately, I don't have the interactive demo, but um, in the screenshot, you can see that you can change the angle of attack and the airspeed and everything started to move. And to be honest, that was quite impressive. And I'm not sure if any of the other state-of-the-art models are able to do that in that detail. The second demo was an interactive demo application for an English speaker to learn French. It should track the daily progress, look highly engaging and it also include a variety of activities like flashcards, quizzes, etc. And also there should be a snake game. What I found interesting in that prompt was the very last sentence, think before answering. So this might be a little trick to actually trigger thinking mode. I'm not sure if that works in reality, but I found it quite interesting in that prompt. The output was in my opinion also quite impressive. It was a fully functioning app. I think the design looks quite good and it was fully functioning. And to be honest, the two demos that were shown were quite impressive, but of course, when you release such a large model like GPT-5, then you probably have prepared 
a prompt that will function. So let's see in the next few days how good that model actually is. What is great news is that even FreeRT users will be able to try it. GPT-5 is being rolled out starting today. While Pro users may benefit from full access with Pro mode and no rate limits, everyone will get a chance to experience this model in action. Have fun!